Question, what pets are best, cats or dogs? I grew up with cats my whole childhood and I love those goofy little fur balls, but I had this one dog when I was young named Skippy. I think he was overwhelmed because he barked an insane amount. Like, I'm surprised he never lost his voice. It was all the time. He was on the verge of being a medium dog, had black fur, and was all right to be around if he didn't bark so much. Unfortunately, I never learned what breed he was, but he didn't last a month, unfortunately. But he's stuck with me since then because I've wanted a dog, something fierce. I'm sure I'll end up with a cat at some point, but cat or dog, I think I just want a travel buddy with me when I'm on the road. So, here's the important question. I'm a writer with ADHD and I like to go to different places in order to write my books. My favorite places are cafes and parks. Let's explore. Should you go to Golden Gate Park in order to write something, anything, a poem, a play, thinking of Shakespeare's Garden, uh, a novel like, like I keep trying to do, is it worth it? Yes first, no sort of second. Hear me out. Before we get to the places that I suggest, let's talk about a little bit of history. Golden Gate Park is not the area connected to the Golden Gate Bridge. I felt dumb when that finally clicked. At first I wondered what the hell is up with this naming convention? Why name a park something similar to a bridge a few miles north? Then I remembered my hometown has an Overton Park that's vaguely connected to or associated with Overton Park. And yes, I bring up Memphis again, but mostly to point out that there are nuances to said naming conventions. No, Golden Gate Park is located in a funky part of San Francisco with over a thousand acres of public grounds. Yes, it's somewhat close to that one bridge we all know and love to take pictures of, but it's in the Richmond district and is actually 20% larger than the Central Park in New York City. It's over three miles long east to west and about half a mile north to south. It's even cool enough to have a panhandle. The development of this park is pretty interesting and sort of on opposite terms to the Big Apple. Opposite sides of the country, one primarily runs north to south, the other east to west. One displaced thousands of people in Manhattan while Golden Gate Park helped thousands of people in San Francisco, displaced by the 1906 earthquake. They were also developed around the same time in the 1860s. Despite plans to either utilize the native flora or introduce non-native plants that require a ton of irrigation, this giant park was developed with future housing in mind. It was a reason to expand San Francisco westward. If you haven't visited here before, there are mountains, molehills, peaks, and just plain steep hills over here. You'll get your butt into shape whether you like it or not. Conversely, I don't think anyone raised here knows what a bluff is. They don't really exist here. Being from Memphis, I only knew the slope of a bluff that glides into the Mississippi River. One more look at the 1906 earthquake. Everything was underdeveloped and shelters popped up everywhere in an area of the park that sounds like an early 2000s dystopian YA novel, Outside Lands. Part of this relief spilled up into the Presidio, which is the park area that leads up into the shiniest bridge that I'm sure people who live here wish I would stop talking about. More info on the Presidio in a future video. Okay, so I definitely glossed over a ton of information, politics, development, and other vague descriptors. I'm not a history channel, but the more I look up the histories of these places, the more I want to know. I know more professional historians have done a better job than I could do to convey it all. I'll do my best to provide some links if you're interested in more. Anyway, on to the 21st century. What's there now? It's time for another seat review. This particular seat is on the end of an elevated trail. It is slightly obscured. If you are scared of heights, then this may feel precarious. Six and a half or so out of 10 at best. May or may not recommend. Good view though. Time for another seat review. I found the beginning of a waterfall on Strawberry Hill, which I want to call a mountain. It isn't, but I'm from West Tennessee, 
where we're far away from the Appalachian Mountains. We don't really know what those are over there. We just have one river and a few bluffs because we're at the top of a delta. Anyway, have you ever wanted to sit by, write pensively uh, next to the ultimate white noise? Because it's pretty loud, but you can sit here and enjoy nature. Okay, so hear me out. If you're at this park uh, and waterfalls aren't your thing, because that was a joke, sitting right next to the waterfall, that's kind of crazy. But on the other side of the this second link that I pointed out, you can, if you squint hard enough, you can see downtown San Francisco here. But there is a picnic table, uh, a green one, that is actually very serene. Um, I know nothing about this, about but there's a little place for beekeeping over here. It's fall, so I don't think that any of them are here. Actually, I was wrong. The bees are here. But I'm zooming in because why would I get closer to a beehive? There are bugs and plants and other things and nature all around me. Um, so I'm just, just going to let the camera sit here for a minute in a bit of a moment of zen. So, is the Botanical Garden the best place ever to write your next novel? I would not say the best, it is pretty good. In spite of the fact that there is actually construction going on, it is fall, and so, you know, if you're not used to the cold, I wouldn't really come here without a jacket of some sort on. I'll let you be the judge on what type of jacket you need. I just need a light jacket right now, but otherwise, you know, I'm fine. It, there is a lot of walking around, so I kind of need to take it off after a, a, a certain point. But just keep in mind, there are a lot of people, I don't know about the summer, um, this is my first time here, in the fall, and plenty of people around, which is why I'm being quiet. There's, there's people walking around, there's also the construction going on around the Redwoods area. One other thing that's kind of making it going from perfect to so-so is the fact that there is an entry fee. Unless you live in San Francisco, there is an entry fee. I believe it's $13 that I paid for. If that's too much for you, I don't know what to tell you. Find, find some other bench somewhere else. So I thought I knew what I was doing when I first wrote down every place in the park that I wanted to go to. I'm not sure what I was thinking because I have a grand total of about nine places, including a couple places that's writing related, like the AIDS Memorial Grove. That one I just, I just wanted to go to because it was interesting. I'm averaging, this is only my second day and I'm so far averaging about six miles. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm cutting this all into three places a day, which sounds like a small number until you start having to walk to each individual place. That's not even thinking about all the different places for food that you need to get to. I'm just like, yeah, I have a water bottle. I'm at Elk Grove picnic area, and I've taken off my shoes and my socks because, like I said, I've been walking for miles. quick snapshot. Shakespeare's garden is an open secret that gets a lot of deserved attention. From the looks of it, people often come here to talk and get a mostly tranquil break from city life. even though just over the hedges is Nancy Pelosi Drive. 
It's also nestled next to the Science Museum and the Music Concourse. Golden Gate Dog Park. I'm about to become a dog foster, which is why I included the pet question at the beginning, and I kept noticing there were dog parks scattered about Golden Gate Park. I met so many new friends. One of them I nicknamed Detective Dog. They kept inspecting me in my backpack, probably to close a case, if that case involved attention, scratches, and love. Bison Paddock. There's a small herd of them, and I was not in the fortunate position to get a shot of them outside of their paddock. They were being fed at the time, so maybe it was just a lazy afternoon for them. It's hilarious how they just stay in one spot and there's all this room. Regardless, it's cool to know that they're there. We're all humans. Unfortunately, we aren't writing machines. Some of us can push ourselves to just keep writing for hours on end, but not all of us are Stephen King. Some of us get existential dread when there's some sort of block in our thoughts. That's not always writer's block. The thoughts just kind of dry up randomly and I, sorry, we freak out over it. That's where this magical new idea comes in handy. Food and coffee. Flywheel coffee roasters. I'm mentioning this cafe here, but treat this as a teaser. They will be a future episode. Annie's Hot Dogs and Snacks. I only saw one of these on the first day that I was traveling. Despite what Apple or Google Maps may have you believe, they have wheels and are mobile. So they might be next to the botanical gardens one day and next to the bison paddock the next. It really depends on their schedule. Stowe Lake Boathouse. Pretty straightforward place. Burgers, fries, coke. Could be considered expensive, but the portions are large and generous. Should you go to Golden Gate Park in order to write something, anything, it is a great place. There are, there are a lot of tables and benches. It is so vast. You really have to know where you're going first. Look around and just let yourself, allow yourself to be distracted because that's where it can become a no. It can easily become very distracting, much like this tiny microphone I hold in my hand here. I'm an optimist, so of course I'm going to say, yeah, it's worth it. I went to like nine different places, and that's nowhere near as many places as you can go. It can be overwhelming. I had to do a lot of research before I narrowed down the choices of where I thought I could go. And even then, I found some writers in the wild that were writing in places that I wouldn't even consider. If you have noise-canceling headphones, just like in the cafes, I think you're golden like the park. Bring a notebook and just enjoy yourself. It's worth it. by nature. On to the next thing, shall we?